in the next one is seeing the cameo that I did, which of course is magnificent. <laughs> and the, um, the thing about the last Fantastic Four movie, I don't know why, I always think in terms, uh, I'm sorry, Spider-Man movie, I always think in terms of cameos, but I thought that was a very good cameo I had where I was in the library stamping books. Awesome. He was, and Spidey was fighting the lizard behind me. And uh, that was kind of, it gave a chance to, for you to see my acting chops, to realize I'm more than just a face of the crowd. <laughs> okay, we have a question for you. I was wondering why a lot of the names of the characters in the Marvel Universe are alliterations, such as Matt Murdock, Peter Parker, or Susan Storm. I heard alliteration. Oh, the same first letter in... Yeah. So it's, that, it's embarrassing, but it's because I have a bad memory. <laughs> if I had the names beginning with the same letter, first and last name, if I could think of one name, then I had a clue that the other name began with the same letter and it would give me an... and that really is the reason. Peter Parker, Betty Grant, uh, all of them, Matt Murdock. As long as I could think of one name, I knew the next name began with the same letter and it was easier for me to think about it. I do not have a good memory. In fact, what am I doing here? <laughs> well, hey, Sam, maybe Jimmy J could have been a good, uh, good name for the Marvel Universe. What do you think? The Marvel Universe? That was a joke, sorry. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go on up here and uh, hand over uh, the mic. You can speak up, I can hear you. Here you go. What's it like to be so revered by people all over the world for your work? How are you? I can answer that one. <laughs> I admire their taste and their good judgment. <laughs> no, it's... I don't understand it, but I must admit I enjoy it. And thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna head over to my to this gentleman. So how come when I go home at night, my wife says, take the garbage out? <laughs> Doesn't she know I'm a big idol? <laughs> You were talking earlier really about how the uh, Silver Surfer was one of your favorite ones to write about, and some of the favorite stories you had. How exactly did it come about to be the Silver Surfer? How did he? How did? How did he create the Silver yeah, Surfer? Yeah, how, how did he come about to be created? Well, that was kind of a funny thing. I didn't create him actually. I created Galactus, and I gave Jack Kirby the plot for the story I wanted, the first Galactus story. When he drew it and gave me back the illustrations, I saw there was some naked nut on a flying surfboard. And I said, who's this? And he said, well, I figure if Galactus is so powerful and he needs to find other planets to destroy, to, to eat really, the energy of, he should have somebody who finds those planets for him. He shouldn't have to go looking himself. So I figured he'd have this guy on a surfboard looking for those planets. So I thought it was kind of a nutty idea, but then I looked at the flying surfer, at the uh, silver surfer, as I called him, that Kirby had drawn, and I thought he looked so noble, and he looked so heroic. And I said, gee, this is a damn good character. So I gave him the name Silver Surfer, and instead of him just being a throwaway character that just looks for planets for Galactus, I decided to try to make him a really important and a philosophical character. I thought I'd have him express a lot of my own thoughts, like here we live on the greatest planet in the world. We have food, we have sunshine, all the water we need, everything. And yet we fight each other and we hate each other and what's wrong with the human race? And I can get the Silver Surface say all those things as if he's from another galaxy and he's wondering about us. So I began to enjoy the character more and more and I now forgot what the question was. <laughs>
Okay. I gave that, you actually answered it. That was a good one. I do have a question back here from uh, this gentleman. If you had a chance to get one power, which one would you choose out of the superheroes? Luck. <laughs> Think about it. If you are truly lucky, everything comes your way. You apply for a job, you get the job. You would buy a ticket for the raffle and you win a hundred billion dollars. You like that girl, she falls in love with you. Luck has to be the greatest thing in the world. The only reason you can't really use it as a superpower for a superhero, it's not visual. How do you draw it? There's no reason to wear a costume if you're lucky. So that's why I don't have a superhero called Mr. Lucky or something. You're going to find things like that happening all the time. And the nice thing about the guys at Marvel, they are good enough writers and artists that they'll make it look good and they'll make great stories out of it. You'll enjoy reading it. So there's nothing I can say except it's a very unusual thing and the fact and the fact that you asked a question about it means you're thinking about it. And the chances are everybody's going to run out and buy the new magazines and see how the hell is this going to work out. And that's what they want. That's what I want. That's what everyone wants. Okay. Uh, my son wants to know why Peter Parker never had children. Oh, he did have children. Oh, he did. He did. He was asking uh, why did he Peter Parker had children? He did. He did. <laughs> you guys remember, he, uh, there was a scene, he did a scene, there was a, an issue, well, a few issues that Peter Parker had a kid, a baby girl, I think it was, and I think Harry, no, uh, Norman Osborn steals her or something like that, and she get, and she's supposed to have died in her. What kind of but, series is that? What? That was the Amazing Spider-Man in the early, I think, 400 series, 400 issues. But yeah, he did have a daughter. Wow, I had no idea. <laughs> okay, how about we do one more question? Is that okay, guys? We're going to do one more question with Stan. Here you go. Hi, Stan. I just wanted to ask, uh, what were what was Bob Kane and Jack Kirby like? And did they have any influence on the characters you have created? What was, what, how was, how was Bob Kane and Jack Kirby? What was he Um, well, I never really worked with Bob Kane, although we were very close friends. And Bob Kane, in those days, Batman was the big character, because there had been a Batman television series, and there was the Batman movie, which was so successful. So he enjoyed ripping me all the time. Hey, look at Batman, and your characters are just in comic books. But he was a good guy, and I could live with that. I wish he were around today. I, I have a feeling he's somewhere, and he knows. But anyway, Jack Kirby was the greatest guy in the world to work with. I had only to give Jack an idea for his stories. You see, I didn't, after the first few issues, I was too busy to write the whole script. So what I would do, I would give the artist just the idea of what I wanted the story to be. And I let them write it and draw it any way they wanted to. Then I would get the pencil pages. And very often I'd find things on the pages I hadn't even thought of. They would put in things like when Kirby put in the sofa that I, I didn't expect. But it made it fun for me because it made it fun for me to put in the dialogue because I was doing new things that were exciting to me. Anyway, Jack Kirby was the most imaginative of all the artists. He, and he could not draw anything that was dull. Anything he drew looked exciting. And I just loved working with him. But I was lucky, I had the greatest artist in the world. There was Steve Ditko, who had the same talent as Jack. He could, I could give him a few words of what the plot should be, and he would embellish it and 
by the time I got the artwork, I'd find things that surprised me, and they were fun to write. And then there was Ramita and Buscema and Gil Kane. And there were so many, Gene Colan, so many great artists I've worked with that made my stories look even better. And I think the question was about Kirby and uh, Bob Kane. Bob Kane was a funny guy. I had dinner with him a lot. And a waiter would come over to the table and he'd say, by the way, do you know who I am? I'm Bob Kane. I created Batman. Look, I'll draw you a picture. <laughs> I, I mean, he loved people knowing he was Bob Kane. That's the one thing I remember about him. But he was a nice guy. Kirby was more quiet, more modest. He never said to people, I'm Jack Kirby and I did that. But he was a great guy and a loyal worker and and one of the most talented men you'll ever find. Well, I think that's a great, uh, a great way to end it. We want to thank you for being here, Stan, spending your weekend with us. Oh it's fantastic. We get a nice big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. I thank you all for putting up with me. Thank you.